Hi guys, today we're going to react to For Us, For Me by The Sixters. This is the Buy Me A Coffee request from Dan LaMarche. Thank you, Dan, for yet another request. Thank you very much, Dan. We appreciate the support. Thanks a lot. song by the sixers that we react to and i love that we're doing it this way because each song that we react to we get a different side of them they're different enough from one another that we get to see how versatile they are i love the sound here uh maria's voice the lead vocalist it's it's more and more distinctive the same effect that we get from other bands that we fall in love with i'd recognize that it's the sixters even if i arbitrarily overheard it on the radio or something i love that the look is different here they're all dressed like they're going to high school school prom or something very different from what we've seen before i love their minimalistic approach to the sound that they bring it's not overbearing it's not bombarded with different instruments and different gimmicks and different what have you it's just the raw sound of their instruments and and the way they approach the song they don't fill it with clutter so far i'm enjoying this very much it's another display of capabilities and skill level i'm loving this it's funny that you said um you know all the songs that we've done from them are different enough whereas i was going to say they are completely different the first one was feels the second was city mm -hmm. and now we're doing this one it feels like they're all not necessarily from different subgenres but the sound is different like it could have been different bands the one thing that ties them together is maria's voice which sounds maybe the best we've heard so far in this one. She sounds fantastic. The slower pace kind of shines a light on it, if you know what I mean. She gets to kind of play with it a little bit more and she doesn't have to be overpowering. She's actually very almost sensitive, pensive. And you said something about their outfits and, and you said they all look like, uh, you know, they're about to go to prom. There's something to that. But to me, I, I thought they look maybe a little more adult, you know, like they dressed up for this. Yeah. Like they're saying, they're trying to say something. Hey, we, we, we have a more adult, more serious side. Whereas in uh, City, which was the previous one, they were dressed like... Uh, Rebels, yeah. Sorry. Well, skaters, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. So there are many, many sides to this band. And we've said it before that it might be them kind of searching for themselves, searching for their sound and, and their one sort of signature and their one identity. But they might find that there's a little bit of them in all of it, which is what I'm loving because I think they should stick to what they do and just keep keep it varied and keep it different the way that they've done, you know, with what we've heard so far anyway. We've only, you know, this is only the third song. It's not a lot, yeah. but we already love them because they're just fantastic. I'm loving the sound of this. Something so, um, I don't know, there's like a depth to it that I'm loving. I get the feeling that they know, in a sense, what they want to say, what they want to bring. They're molding their craft in the message that they want to bring they know what they want to bring 
But at the same time, you get the feeling that they are still forming. It's a beautiful process to witness. They know exactly where they're going. We're witnessing them growing up with the, the way they deliver their message, not not with the message itself. And there's something uh, magical about it, I think. Another thing that I noticed here, this song has a, a vulnerability to it. In the previous two songs, the thing that I felt from the band and, and from Maria's uh, delivery of it was maybe a little bit of a mischievous frustration. Here, I feel pain. Yeah, There's pain behind this one. It's a lot more vulnerable and... I love that. From fields to city and to, to for us, for me, the more we progress between those three songs, it starts with fields where the band members presented themselves as slightly a side of reality, something out of a comic book, something fictional. And when we reacted to city, there were more uh, rebellious skater type uh, uh, characters. I get the sense that we're looking at the band members. We're looking at the persons themselves. They're more in line with reality here. And I'm just saying that judging by the order that we reacted to their songs. No way, no way, no way to feel safe. Trip your eyes, hold me tight. You'll never know how long I've been searching for. Fantastic. Being aware of them before listening to this song and experiencing how they uh, changed gears and, and they added more ferocity to the last segment, it gives me the sense that even though they appear to be more collected, you get the sense that there's a lot more power in them that's aching to be unleashed. That's the main thing I take uh, from reacting to the Sixters uh, so far. Curiosity. I'm curious to see how far the rabbit hole goes with what they can bring. Yeah, I'm also intrigued. I want to hear more, definitely. Because if somebody asked me what they sound like, I will say they sound like I want to hear more. <laughs> yeah. Because it's good, you know, it's just, it's like, there's a certain sort of urgency to the way they perform this song so far. It's almost like they're saying, we're here, but we're not here yet. There's a desire to explode and you yeah. can feel it. Yeah. They know they're good, but they know they still haven't reached their, their full potential or their true potential as far as success. And they just want to get there already. You yeah. can feel it, and I feel that they deserve it as well because they're that good, and I think they have a complete package here as far as um, the talent, the skill, the the sound, the look, everything about them works. So, yeah, so I'm definitely curious to see what comes next, you know, what else they've got because they do have a lot more, so I'm sure we'll get to, to cover more. And I hope that, that our audience finds their way to them as well. So yeah, so that, that'll be interesting. Judging by the lyrics, I don't know what it, it exactly refers to, but it feels like it's dealing with a form of depression. Even in the first verse when they say, even sunset is gone already and I can feel it barely. Empty walls, white canvas. I dive into nowhere. 
steps are getting slower, thoughts like prayers, God, will you forgive me? So there's a sense of guilt there, and there's a sense of having to face every new day as a form of turmoil. There's something that that it's something bad. Like the pain starts all over again. I don't know where it comes from. What, what's what's the origin of that uh, that uh, sort of despair or or negative feelings? But uh, it it, may, it gets me thinking about a, a form of depression, something like a like a loop that they can't break free of. I'm sure that the uh, you know true meaning of this came from somewhere, something specific. But as always, we've discussed this with their other songs as well. There's always something a bit ambiguous about mm-hmm. the way they write. There's something that uh, we've noticed that the English is slightly broken in places, but nothing major. And here, they, they are as ambiguous as, as they've been so far. You can take it many, many different ways. It feels kind of general, but you know that it's specific. You can tell from the way she sings it, from the way it's performed. You can tell that there's something very personal here, but it's very difficult to kind of work out what it is from the lyrics. Depression is an interesting direction to take it in because, like you said, in that first verse, it describes, you know, sunset is gone already. I can feel it ba- barely. I dive into nowhere. So there's like a, a certain loss of sense of time and place, which is interesting. And again, we know about the situation. They're from the Ukraine and the war. And it could also relate to that because when you're in a war, it creates that kind of situation. The God, will you forgive me? I'm not sure where that comes from. It's very difficult to, to work out because it presents a sense of guilt. Whereas in the next verse, she says, betrayed and broken as well, or left in a hole without light. How should I escape? No way to feel safe. And that could be also attributed to either depression or war yeah. <laughs> or something. But then it goes into treat me right, hold me tight. So looking for some kind of uh, comfort, some kind of protection so to feel safe again. You'll never know how long I've been searching for love and care, words and strength. I'm stumbling. I'm going up, but anyway, falling off the edge. So it's a sense of despair. It's like, no matter what I do, I feel like it's not going the right way. And then it goes into, for us, for me, there's nothing more to say. And that last sentence, sanity is odd here. So nothing feels right. It could be to do with some kind of depression, some kind of confusion, some kind of loss. And again, it could just be that sort of mess of war. It could be many, many things. And it's beautifully written because it keeps you guessing and everything about it can send you in a few different directions. And that's what I like about it. The feeling that I get from it is one thing and the lyrics can be interpreted in are another thing and I love that combination I love the fact that I'm not that I don't know and I'm not sure but it doesn't matter because it makes me feel a certain way there's a certain despair in the way it's performed and I think that's the main feeling that I get from this and it's just fantastic yeah I like how the title, at least to me, it, it brings a form uh, maybe of solution of the, for that despair. I don't know if that's the way they meant it, but for us, for me, to me, it means if I'll be there for us, if I'll put others' needs before my own, then it will help me, help me heal whatever it is that is burdening me. Yeah, or for us as in a relationship, for me as in me myself, I don't know. But again, it's just, it's interesting and uh, and I'm loving everything about it. Yeah, yeah, I am too. Beautiful. So thank you, um, Dan LaMarche. Um, thanks again, Dan, for uh, a fantastic request. We loved it. Yeah, thanks, Dan, for requesting the song. Uh, we love reacting to the Sixers. Please, more like this. If you enjoyed this episode, guys, please be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and click the little bell icon so you get notified on all our future videos. If you have a request you'd like bump up the line, please make it through Buy Me a Coffee. All contributions are, of course, very much appreciated. Thank you all for sticking with us. Thank you all for your time. Please check out the Sixters playlist, which should be appearing on the screen right now, a newly formed playlist. And thanks again, guys. We appreciate the support. We'll be back in a couple of days with a new episode, and we hope to see you then. Thanks, guys. Bye for now. Bye, guys.